Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Korean War and civil rights. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the war in Korea and the impact that civil rights had not only upon this war but upon American society soon after the war is Dr. Charles Kimbrough, a longtime activist in the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Uh, Dr. Kimbrough, let me uh, welcome you to uh, the show this morning. It's my privilege to be here with you, Dr. Haney. And to tell you how delighted, Dr. Kimbrough, uh, we are to have you here uh, this morning. As we said uh, uh, earlier, that you are a longtime activist in the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And I think that if uh, there is an individual who is a uh, representative of the uh, association in Nashville, Tennessee, you would certainly be uh, that individual. And so we're certainly happy to have you here and to talk about a topic that we know that you're familiar with, and that is uh, civil rights, because you've been involved in this whole struggle of improving the condition of the African American for the longest. But before we uh, get into uh, the uh, Korean War and uh, civil rights, uh, Dr. Kimbrough, let's have you to give our audience some information about your background, your education, and some of the things that led to uh, this passion that you have for the uh, rights of the African American? Well, Dr. Haney, uh, I come from Giles County, uh, the, which has uh, Pulaski as its county seat, mm -hmm. the home of the KKK. Mm -hmm. uh, and with me, uh, I guess the passion is kind of ingrained. Mm -hmm. Uh, not that I knew uh, directly or saw activities of the KKK, but I guess mm -hmm. when you have a, that kind of organization, when you even learn about it later in life, mm -hmm. you recognize that mm -hmm. you grew up or were growing up mm -hmm. in an area that uh, survival mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of black people mm -hmm. was, a, was a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, you, did, you didn't understand why you were told uh, to do certain things, certain ways, mm -hmm. not to say certain things, mm -hmm. disregard certain mm -hmm. uh, behavioral pattern mm -hmm. of white folk, for instance, mm -hmm. but uh, you, it, it, it becomes uh, quite clear mm -hmm. that uh, your parents and the people that you grew up around, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, uh, teachers, mm -hmm. Uh, parents, uh, preachers and teachers, mm -hmm. whatever, they were uh, guiding you around some of the mm -hmm. uh, obstacles they mm -hmm. that they knew mm -hmm. existed for black mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. I had no, uh, mm -hmm. I never asked why mm -hmm. uh, I uh, rode uh, a horse uh, three or four miles and then walked mm -hmm. a couple of miles mm -hmm to keep up with the larger children. Mm -hmm. I, I, I never understood mm -hmm. until I, uh, late in life, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. mom just put you on put a on horse, horse. Mm -hmm. and you s start riding mm -hmm. and let you know mm -hmm. that now you, you should be able to keep up mm -hmm. and you don't, you don't question that mm -hmm. and you just, just mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I uh, didn't ever ask mm -hmm. why you, Mm -hmm. had to stay out of school two or three days and go to school two or three days mm -hmm. to do farm chores mm -hmm. uh, in the absence of uh, mm -hmm. getting an education. While mm -hmm. you saw uh, white children uh, mm -hmm. uh, go to school uh, mm -hmm. each day of the week mm -hmm. just as a matter of, mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. habit. Mm -hmm. And so being, uh, growing up in Pulaski, Tennessee, really left a real impression on you in reference to uh, how the, the race situation in a real sense is sort of an ingrained kind of thing in, in the community in which you grew up. Is that, uh, would that be a, a, a characterization of what you're saying here? Yes. Um, for, for black people, when I grew up, we, we're talking about uh, in the 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. uh, get to get a an eighth grade education mm -hmm. you know it'd be like getting a BS mm -hmm. or a master's degree now mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know you treasure that because there was no really uh, not that much emphasis mm -hmm. not from my family mm -hmm. uh, and I said that my family was not an unusual family mm -hmm. there were some people that uh, 
I know, they encourage you to, mm -hmm. to stay in school and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But being on the farm, mm -hmm. uh, when you, you know, it's around seventh, eighth grade, mm -hmm. you didn't want to go to school, mm -hmm. you know. You, that was just about the, the end of school for you. That was about the end of school for okay, you. Okay, and of course, we're, uh, we're doing our first commercial break here, Dr. Kimbrough. And when we come back, we'll uh, talk about uh, some of your er earlier educational accomplishments and going off to a Tuskegee Institute and, and some of the things in, in right. reference to that and the impact that that had upon you and uh, your outlook dealing with this whole issue of race. Right. And of course, we'll be back with uh, our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. The topic is the career.